Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff James. I'm the CEO of Wilmington Health, and today I'm with Dr. Paul Kamitska, one of our infectious disease experts. Uh, Paul, hope you're having a good day. I've got a handful of questions for you, and so why don't we go ahead and just uh, get started. Okay. So, number one, Paul, um, have you noticed a peak or a surge in cases, and, and why do you think that is, if, if you have? Yes. Uh Unfortunately, uh, I regret to report that yes, we have seen uh, a definite surge uh, in the over the past three weeks in cases. Uh, we currently have four times the number of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 that that we had just three weeks ago, uh, and I think that the most reasonable assumption is to attribute this to the um, re relaxation of um, uh, not only opening up, uh, uh, you know, stores and uh, uh, beach beaches and so forth, but also everybody is way prematurely relaxing their adherence to uh, social distancing guidelines, uh, and I fear that this trend will continue uh, over the next um, month or so. It's, uh, it's delayed because uh, you know, it takes up to two weeks for you to really see the impact of new cases. But for example, uh, recently in the emergency room, uh, we saw a group of seven folks who all tested positive. And what they had done was to uh, rent two vans and drive to Georgia to party uh, around Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and all of them got infected and there we are. Um, social distancing, I think we have to change our, our attitude toward it. It is here to stay for the next two or three years. It's not until we have an effective and widely disseminated vaccine that we, we can relax social distancing. That's the bad news. The good news is social distancing really does appear to work. And it appears now that the, one of the most important things is wearing masks. And um, we really need to have laws across the United States mandating the use of masks outside the home. And these, this would have to be strictly enforced. That is the only way I see that we can get down to some semblance of normalcy in terms of businesses being open uh, with as little uh, further hit to the economy. If everybody wears a mask, everybody uses uh, hand sanitizer and keeps at least six feet distance um, and uh, does that on, on a routine basis, then we could have some chance of being able to safely keep things open. Um, there was some recent data uh, published uh, estimating that just wearing masks is about 85% effective in preventing the transmission of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID-19. So simple intervention, and other countries that have done this have had very good results. Uh, for example, Taiwan never actually shut down, uh, but everybody was wearing a mask and they've had very few cases. Uh, in the country of Austria, they've done a tremendous job of limiting the number of cases, but masking is mandated. Uh, I was heartened to see just today, uh, the city of Miami uh, is considering mandating uh, mask use uh, as well. I think that's really the step that we're gonna have to take nationally if we're gonna have any chance of mitigating this, uh, this pandemic. That's really good, and Paul, I think you must have uh, read my mind because you answered about half of the questions. Oh, gee. <laughs> 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 so, so, so good for you. But one area of questioning that is still definitely uh, left is, what's the current status of testing, and where do you see that going? So, the the the, and we're learning more about this as we go along. So, the test to diagnose infection is something that's called a PCR test. It's a molecular amplification test. It's a nose swab. And that is um, unfortunately not as sensitive as we would wish. So let's say you're exposed to somebody and get infected with the virus. So, and let's say on day five, you develop symptoms. 
Well, the test will only detect it on perhaps day four or five. And the virus load becomes detectable. It goes up just a day or at most two before the onset of symptoms. And so if you get exposed on a Saturday and get tested on a Monday and that's negative, all that means is that you're not contagious on Monday, but on Wednesday, you may be. And that's the problem with this test. I wish that it could be foolproof in terms of saying yes or no, you've got it or not. But the problem is that the sensitivity of the test doesn't go up until just about a day or two before you develop symptoms, if you're gonna develop symptoms. And that's the other uh, wrinkle with this virus is that there are many patients who've got asymptomatic, no detectable symptoms, and yet are potentially uh, contagious. So that's, the, uh, uh, that's the, the first test that is available is the diagnostic test. The other aspect of that <clears throat> is that that test, once it becomes positive, may remain positive for, for months. And that becomes a real issue on the backside of illness. When does a person become non-contagious? And so we are increasingly moving toward what we call a symptom-based strategy for taking people off of isolation. Uh, there is no test of cure. So if you were to do a test, say a month after you have your first positive test and you're clinically totally well, that test may still be positive. Now, all the data suggests that beyond say eight days after the onset of symptoms, you're no longer contagious. So the CDC has issued a guideline for symptom-based um, uh, discontinuation of isolation, which is at least 10 days since the onset of symptoms and at least 72 hours that you're without fever, without taking any fever, reducing medications, and at least 72 hours with improving respiratory symptoms. And that's generally what we uh, use now uh, because we don't have a test uh, to tell us when a person is precisely non-contagious anymore. Now, the other testing uh, modality that's gained uh, a lot of um, public interest is the so-called antibody testing. That's a totally different test. That doesn't look for the genetic material of the virus itself, but rather your blood's, your, your own immune system's reaction to the virus. And the problem with those tests is really the opposite. Uh, whereas the PCR test uh, suffers from lack of sensitivity in terms of detecting whether you're infected, the antibody test, because there are other coronaviruses that cause the common cold uh, that circulate in the United States, because the antibody tests can cross react with those uh, uh, infections, if you have a positive antibody test, it doesn't necessarily mean that in fact you had COVID. Uh, it probably means, but not, does not necessarily mean, and that's relevant. Uh, these tests are, at this point, primarily useful for epidemiologic surveys. So if you look at the entire city of New York City to see, rough as a rough guide, what proportion have become, become infected, the antibody test will help you with that answer. And so that was done, and about 20% of the New York City population sampled had positive antibodies. That tells you two things. That tells you that 20% probably were infected, but it also tells you that 80% are still susceptible, okay? If we were to do the same thing here in Wilmington, probably would find 95% uh, have not had it, 5% may have had it. But the key point is we don't recommend any individuals doing the antibody testing because you can't take the result to the bank. You can't make any personal decisions about a positive test. Uh, that is, the positive test means you probably had it, but then it would not be enough to be able to say to yourself, okay, I've already had it, so therefore I'm immune, and to make any work decisions or, or things of that sort. Uh, we're hoping that we'll have better tests uh, to help us ferret that out in the near future, but at this point in time, we can't use the antibody test in that way. When do you think we might have better tests? You mentioned in the near future. Is that uh, <clears throat> Well, I would months? say, 
Yeah, I would say uh, probably months. Uh, it's really an issue of, of validation. Uh, you have to test a lot of people uh, to make sure that the false positive rate is going to be low. Uh, and uh, so as of now, uh, both the FDA and CDC do not recommend using uh, antibody tests uh, for individual decision making. Uh, but I suspect that will uh, come over time uh, in the next few months, I would say. Great, great. Paul, actually, I think you have answered all of the questions I was going to ask. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so thanks for making it easy on me. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, thank you so much and, and appreciate your time today. Right. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.